Big Crown Showdown releases on the 14th of December on Steam, the PS4 and Xbox One, with a Nintendo Switch release planned for January. It's a competitive multiplayer party game playable both locally and online for up to four players. The general premise mixes a rather unique blend of 3D platforming, one button brawling and a roaming camera designating the field of play. Somewhat reminiscent of old school platformers where if you leave the screen for long enough you lose a life. A life is also lost each time you fall off the course or otherwise fall victim to rolling barrels, leaping flames or scalding steam. The aim is to make it through the, the course or level with as many lives remaining as possible. The game is developed by Hyperluminal Games and published by Sold Out. Hyperluminal are an independent game studio based in Dundee, Scotland. Prior to Big Crown Showdown, the team worked on a number of educational games, including web browser and phone games. Up until the start of 2018, the game was known as Ignite, and from what I can tell, work started on the game in the middle of 2016. Publishers sold out are based in London, and appear to specialise in the localization, sales and marketing for a number of well-known studios. Team 17, Rebellion and Frontier, to name a few, have all released titles while partnered with Sold Out. I first featured Big Crown Showdown in my EGX 2018 review back in September. I added it to my Steam wishlist when it was available, but took my eye off it since. I was pleasantly surprised to get a key for the game, my first review copy of anything ever, and it filled me with a sense of motivation that I'd really been lacking lately towards content creation. I'm always on the lookout for new games to play with my partner, so to be given the opportunity to check out something I was already looking forward to was great. At its heart, the game is a pick up and play multiplayer brawler set on a series of obstacle courses. There's a short opening cutscene that attempts to give purpose to the ensuing competition. Old King Krabbit is assassinated by the great wizard Funkin, who sends the King's Guard, the Grumble Guard, a hundred years into the future where they're forced to compete with each other for a crown, and what I can only assume to be the wider affections of the populace. We found the combat to be simple, with one button tap punching and a long press charging a punch for greater power. Missing a charge punch would often see you running off a ledge, so accuracy and timing is important. The right trigger would also allow you to put up a shield to block, which would usually bounce your opponent off the track. There are 15 levels, set across three distinct themes, but the overall goal is to reach the score target. This is set to 20 by default for quick play, and each player is given 5 lives. Points are earned by killing other players, and extra points are earned by killing the player with the crown. The level ends when all but one player has run out of lives, or the end of the course is reached, at which point the remaining lives of surviving players are added to their score. A new level then begins, while the player with the highest score wears the crown. The quick play option picks the levels randomly, but there's also the option to set up a custom game. While this allows the players to select 10 levels in any order they choose, perhaps the feature we found most useful was altering the match settings. From this menu, the number of lives per level, the victory points needed to win, the strength with which you can hit each other, and the points gained by killing the player with the crown can all be altered. Perhaps the most fun we had though was changing the map speed. We found the higher scrolling speed to be much more chaotic and added a sense of urgency and reduced the time we spent in standoffs with our shields out as the map caught up. With more players we'd probably like to slow the speed down to give us more time to slap each other around. The obstacles vary depending on the map theme. The medieval steampunk theme known as Castle Tune features swinging axes, flames, steam, turning cogs, conveyor belts and rolling barrels. Zoggy Sands, the Egyptian waterfront theme levels, have a lot of boats, flowing water, moving blocks and rising tides. The alpine levels of Shiverspire feature falling snowballs, delicate ice platforms, moving viking ships and freezing gusts. 
The levels also have chests started around. These can be hit a few times and drop coins. The coins can be spent on various hats by selecting the swag option on the main menu. These can be selected before starting a game and remain visible as long as you're not wearing the crown. At normal speed, levels take around 100 seconds to reach the end, while on high speed they take around 60 seconds. Levels only take around 10 seconds to load, so while the levels are short, there's very little downtime to break up the action. The music is cheery and a bit of an earworm. I caught myself humming the theme tune while cooking later in the day after playing. I experienced no major issues while playing, no frame drops, no crashes, and no significant bugs. The only minor annoyance was the mouse cursor reappearing on the screen at the end of each level. We played with a couple of gamepads and didn't need to do anything special in order to get them to function correctly. I didn't get the chance to play online as the game wasn't officially released at the time of recording. But the functionality appears to be the same as playing locally, with the option for matchmaking or to invite friends from Steam. Big Crown Showdown is a fun game and fits nicely into the subset of games that can be played from the couch. Although I only played for a couple of hours, it strikes me that rather than the game being an obstacle course with platforms and traps, it more closely resembles a brawler with the maps themselves, after a few runs, being fairly simple to navigate. The bigger challenge comes in gaining more points than your opponents through aggressive actions. If I could offer criticism, it would be that the levels are too short, and that there aren't enough of them. It's possible to experience every level within an hour. This isn't really a problem though, just like it wouldn't be a problem to play the same Mario Kart track more than once. The game can't be played solo, and there's no way to add AI opponents. I feel as if this would help mix things up, particularly when just playing as two players. If one player is significantly better than the other, I can see that there might be detrimental effects for both players. This can somewhat be alleviated by adjusting the game settings in a custom match to allow more points to be given when knocking out the winning player. And when it comes to customization, it'd be nice to allow the player to pick the colour of their Grumble Guard Knight. When I first saw Big Crown Showdown at EGX, I was excited to add another title into my party and local co-op game category in my Steam library and after a more extensive hands-on, the game doesn't disappoint. As I watched back the footage I'd recorded, I noticed just how much love had been put into creating the environment which we somehow missed a lot of during the action. The game is engaging, competitive and fun, with a penchant for laughing out loud when a charge punch sends someone into the drink. At 9 99 it's competitively priced with other similar games in the genre, and if you're looking to pick up something to play with the family over the Christmas holidays, Big Crown Showdown would be a great choice. Hey guys, thanks for watching and making it through to the end of my video. There's actually a lot of great stuff coming out this Christmas period. Um, I know that uh, quite a few of the games that, actually all of the games that I've covered on my review playlist have actually been bringing out stuff or have announcements uh, this winter period. So I know that Catastronauts have a Nintendo Switch release coming um, that should be available um, 24th of December for the EU and Australia and then I think it's a January release for North America. I know uh, Two Point Hospital have their Bigfoot DLC, which adds quite, uh, three more levels to Two Point Hospital. Um, Monster Hunter World currently have their Christmas thing ongoing. They've also announced some DLC for the future and a nice little uh, Witcher 3 collab, so you can, I assume, play as Geralt. Um, in Monster Hunter World, which I'm actually really looking forward to as a big Witcher 3 fan. Um, and then there's Overcooked 2, which have... Uh, they've just put out a really short teaser trailer so far, but I would expect that they're doing some wintry Christmas theme content. And 
as the tagline for it is that it's freezing, I'm hoping it's actually free. So that would be nice. Uh, anyway, once again, thank you for watching. And if I'm not back with another video before Christmas, I hope you have a great one. Cheers, guys.